A big jet stream trough is on the way as we head through the central and eastern United States starting Easter weekend going into early next week with a big severe weather event possible from the Mississippi Valley all the way on over to the east coast as thunderstorms will come crashing down. In this video, I've got a discussion of all the weather ahead, so stick around with me right here on One Nation Weather. One Nation Weather. I appreciate you being here with me. Don't forget to check out the weather bell trial down in the description for the maps that I use throughout this video. As always, subscribe to the channel if you enjoy the video. And let's get right into it here. As I talk to you here on your Thursday evening, we've got snowfall and some showers on going over parts of the Pacific Northwest, a little rain along the East Coast. But overall, pattern is fairly quiet for now. Things are going to change, though, especially over the Southwest as we go as early as our Friday late day with snow and some of the high elevations, especially of the Sierras there. Some rain falling to parts of California, gusty winds as well, creating fire danger there in New Mexico. I mean, then you can also see here as we go into this weekend towards Saturday, we'll be dealing with some showers over parts of Illinois, Indiana, Ohio, surrounding areas there of the Great Lakes, maybe a little bit of snow falling up there in northern Wisconsin, parts of the Upper Peninsula, and northern Michigan. That will ride on off towards the east by early Sunday as that crashes off the east coast and very weakened state, maybe bringing a little a bit of snow flurries there to parts of interior New England, and maybe even trying to get closer to the coast as well, though. Anyway, you can see, though, by the time we go towards the late day Sunday, we've got big snow, big wind over a lot of the west, maybe some early thunderstorm development that could be briefly severe, I'm trying to get going there, maybe into parts of Missouri, Illinois, Indiana, and you can really see the beginning of our surface low pressure system at formation here over parts of Kansas. Using this European model, it's indicating showers and storms into parts of Missouri, Iowa, and Illinois um, late Sunday, so your Easter Sunday going into early Monday, April Fool's Day, so what an April Fool's joke that would be to wake up to some early morning severe storms there into parts of southern Iowa parts of Illinois. It wouldn't briefly rule that out. Although the higher risk is going to come as we go into Monday, as the storm system begins to strengthen, you can see this warm front up there draped from Iowa all the way on over to the Mid-Atlantic with showers and elevated convective thunderstorms along that as well. Look at how the southerly flow is really going to be developing on behind that warm front. We're going to have 60s for dew points, which is very moist, pretty much moving all the way up there into parts of Indiana and Ohio even. So by the time we go towards Monday evening, looking like a severe weather um, event, maybe even an outbreak if this uptrends, could begin to get going there, especially over parts of Oklahoma, Kansas, Missouri, where it looks like most models are showing at least some showers and storms being severe. Otherwise, though, some of those zones in Texas and over into Indiana and Ohio that I'll show you as highlighted later by the Storm Prediction Center, those areas are a little more uncertain, um, but you can definitely see on up there probably through Minnesota and Wisconsin, we'll probably see some snow move from the Dakotas to there out of this event Monday going into Tuesday. Notice Tuesday morning, the European model showing a front draped over parts of the Ohio Valley back on down here into the south central United States as well. And again, there could still be some showers and storms maybe moving through the Ohio River Valley that are severe all the way back down to the mid-Mississippi Valley at that time. Time. Probably if we get a severe risk, it's going to be in the circled zones as we go through the day Tuesday and especially into the evening hours. And it looks like we're going to get a little bit of a polar jet stream attachment. Um, so a northern stream piece of energy is going to work its way into the storm system um, with this upper trough. And all that means is that the storm is certainly going to be strengthening here right along the east coast. Um, and that could even bring some interior New England snowfall as well and definitely some bigger winds as that rapidly intensifies depending on how quickly that occurs. Now one thing I want to point out is that the GFS model shows a little bit of a different scenario. Notice late Monday going into Tuesday, it really only shows the low pressure system with northern end snowfall and maybe some severe weather through parts of Missouri, Illinois, and Indiana. Um, further towards the Midwest, not as much of a southern attachment until we go towards Tuesday, so that would split the severe weather risk out of parts of Texas, maybe even southern Oklahoma and Arkansas, um, but uh, increase it there into parts of southern Appalachia and the southeast. And then notice the end result of this is some snowfall there through parts of interior New England, so a similar look by the end to the European model, but certainly some differences here um, out of the GFS at times, um, and which is just one of our computer models having a little bit of a disagreement there, which is certainly normal for being five, six days out from this event. As we go towards Monday, Storm Prediction Center nonetheless has a broad 15%, which means a slight level two of five severe weather risk is anticipated here from Northeast Texas all the way in over there um, to parts of Indianapolis there in Indiana, and that curls through states of um, Oklahoma, Arkansas, Missouri going on up through, through Illinois. You can see as we go towards Tuesday. I think this is a little bit small of a zone and it might be a little displaced from where we end up seeing our severe weather Tuesday, but from parts of Ohio all the way back down closer to the Gulf Coast, be on alert as showers and storms look possible there. 
Um, as we go towards Tuesday. And again, it's courtesy of this upper trough right here, a positively tilted trough. While that's not the strongest type of trough, look at those oranges and reds cutting through parts of Texas into the um, Midwest and Ohio Valley late Monday going into Tuesday. Yeah, that's indicative of a strong system and it'll only be strengthening as it gets um, that northern stream energy that I talked about just a minute ago connecting with it. Um, this big dip in the jet stream and the connection to the polar and subtropical jet streams is likely going to cause um, those westerly winds that are strong in the upper levels that we were just looking at there to overlap with this right here and these winds that are on your screen now are lower and closer to the surface here only say at several thousand feet above our heads as opposed to tens of thousands of feet above our heads and you can see that these southerly winds closer to the surface will be overlapping with westerly winds Monday night going into Tuesday in those same zones with the potential um, of severe weather that are outlined which means that we could definitely be seeing some rotation in the atmosphere meaning that likely all modes of severe weather will be possible even as we go late Tuesday and into Wednesday here over parts of the south Eastern United States. So this certainly looks like an interesting event. You can see we've got a lot of storm energy starting even Sunday afternoon here over parts of your Easter Sunday um, and parts of central Texas, western Oklahoma, central Kansas as well getting in on some of that storm energy as well as on over there into the Midwest where I think severe weather is most likely um, but not necessarily significant late Sunday going into Monday. Look at this, though, as we go towards Monday in those same zones with the wind shear, which is where those winds are crossing in the atmosphere, creating that rotation. We've got at least modest storm energy. And keep in mind, you rarely get into those purples and whites and blacks that you see on the bottom of your screen in the color key. Um, so really, anything in the blues and into the greens here is what you really need to be watching for some storm energy in place. Um, you can see some of that still likely in place. Um, the GFS model, even more bullish, even as we go towards Tuesday here over parts of the southeast. So the main message I want you to see out of this as even some of that storm energy heads towards the east coast Wednesday is that we're probably going to see all the ingredients in place we need for a severe weather event. Now, taking a look here at Colorado State's um, machine learning severe weather predictions here, this is a computerized forecast that we're kind of basing a little bit of our information off of here. As we go towards Sunday, Sunday night, maybe parts of Missouri, southeast Iowa, even western Illinois, that's where that is showing a slight level two of five severe weather risk being possible there. That is what that is indicative of and what this machine learning forecast would put out if it were the Storm Prediction Center. As we go towards Monday, look at this big outline um, that it has of yellow, at least a slight risk there from northeast Texas all the way to Ohio. But but look there, we could even have a potential enhanced risk zone, at least again, if this were being issued by this machine learning this far out for Monday, April 1st here, um, especially in the parts of Arkansas and Missouri there, where hatch zones are um, being indicated by this. That is where I think many signals are showing from not just this, but our computer models as well, that we could potentially see our most intense severe weather there um, over parts of Missouri and Arkansas as we go into our Monday. And then as we head towards Tuesday, probably again, this is why I said it could be displaced a little bit from where the Storm Prediction Center is showing somewhere in the southeast, um, east coast, Tennessee Valley, somewhere in Appalachia and those areas. Yeah, that's a lot of areas I just mentioned. It's because it's pretty uncertain as we head towards Tuesday. Now, again, on my own W severe scale, which goes from one to seven on severe weather um, prediction, parts of Missouri and into Illinois is where I'm watching Sunday for the beginning of our severe weather event. But as we go towards Monday, I think all hazards appear likely, um, over, especially over parts of Oklahoma, Arkansas, and Missouri. So watch those areas. But everyone from Texas to Ohio really seeing at least a one or a two. So stay on high alert in some of those zones for a potentially increasing possibility of severe weather. Now, in terms of total snowfall here, using our model blend, you can see parts of the Sierras as well as parts of the Mountain West, including higher elevations of the Rockies and Utah, um, Colorado, as well as on up there into Wyoming, some spots a foot plus of snow. Um, find your location on here, up here if you're in the upper Midwest. It looks like some light to moderate snow, at least being indicated by a model blend. It won't necessarily play out like this out of the system as we go into early next week. Um, and then as we head towards the Tuesday, Wednesday, Day time frame, of course, interior New England snowfall looking likely. Some of that could be very heavy, especially on up in Maine and total precipitation out of the system. Um, first of all, we've had a little rain again over the Great Lakes um, as we head towards this weekend, as well as back on over there in the southwest, um, especially in the parts of California This as we head through the end of this week, end of the weekend. That's where we'll be watching a flooding threat. Then as we head towards um, the system that we're actually watching for severe weather, looks like that'll bring the heaviest rain of inch plus totals there over parts of the Midwest into the Ohio Valley as we head towards the early to mid part of next week. Some local totals, two to four inches, maybe through especially Illinois, Indiana, and Ohio, especially 
especially if that GFS model comes correct with a very heavy rain in those zones and maybe a little bit of a lower severe risk if you go with the GFS. Nonetheless, as we head towards the east coast here, it's looking like some of the heaviest rainfall zones will be in southern New England, um, but certainly in any of those embedded storms you get through the southeast, it could definitely um, be very heavy rainfall and a flood threat there as well. This will not be a major flood event, but nonetheless something we're watching. Now, as we take a look at temperatures, 60s and 70s here on your Friday afternoon um, over a lot of the southern and eastern United States, same story goes for Saturday, but look at this. Some of these zones through Texas, Oklahoma, all the way through a lot of the south central United States in that southern corridor in the 70s, the upper 70s at that, and into the low to mid 80s. By the time we go towards Sunday, you can really make out the boundary that's going to help to support our next storm system. Look at some of these zones here in the parts of Kansas, um, Oklahoma, Arkansas, Missouri, southern Illinois. It's, yeah, it's in the 80s in some of those localized zones, maybe even pushing 85, um, and especially back on there towards Texas. Look at this. Any of those deep red shades you see along the Gulf Coast Monday indicating where we're going to be seeing plenty of 80s to go around in the severe weather risk outline zone for Monday late day, looking like we're going to be well into the 80s in the southern part of it, at least into the 70s into parts of the Midwest. And remember, we've got more favorable um, atmospheric dynamics there as well as we head towards Monday there over the Midwest, so that could certainly compensate. Uh, plenty of, again, 80s back down closer to the Gulf Coast Monday. You can see this front crashing down Tuesday, but certainly in zones that could see severe weather Tuesday from the Tennessee Valley, the Appalachians back on down there um, to parts of Louisiana, looking like we're in the 70s there. Um, and maybe still locally some severe weather in the eastern Carolinas, eastern Georgia, parts of Florida on Wednesday, although we will see cooler air rushing in with 40s and 50s into a lot of the Great Lakes and Northeast. Again, on Wednesday, now your 6 to 10 day temperature probability outlook. So this has taken us here um, just a little bit into April, and we're looking at cooler than average air likely over the West Coast, as said by the um, Climate Prediction Center. A little bit of um, cooler than average air in the Southeast, warmer than average over the North Central United States. But look at this right here, um, the 8 to 14 day outlook, which goes from the 5th to the 11th here of April, which encompasses the 8th, which is your eclipse day right in the middle, showing a lot of precipitation over the United States. Hopefully that doesn't play out, and we don't have a big storm impact your um, solar eclipse viewing and with clouds. Nonetheless, if you want to be with me through all the weather ahead, please hit that subscribe button. I deliver forecasts and even some update live streams. And of course, check out the link in the description to Weatherball. That's it.